11. That's how many African Americans have ever served in the United States Senate. Three of them are currently serving, Senators Cory Booker, Tim Scott, and Raphael Warnock. And now Delaware Congresswoman Lisa Blunt Rochester is running to join their ranks. If successful, she'd be only the third black woman ever elected to the U.S. Senate. Blunt Rochester is no stranger to moments in history. She is the first state's first black person and first woman elected to Congress. And she was in the House gallery on January 6th during the insurrection. A searing moment she talks about in her Senate announcement. People ask me if January 6th was my worst day. It was. But it was also one of my proudest moments. Because we walked back in that House chamber and we completed our work. The forces of fear did not win and democracy prevailed. Joining me now is Delaware Congresswoman Lisa Blunt Rochester, candidate for the United States Senate. Congresswoman, welcome to the Saturday show. So I'm going to ask you the same question I ask anyone running for office. Why are you running? And if elected, what would be your priorities? Well, first of all, Jonathan, it is so great to be on the show with you. And thank you just so much for the work that you do on behalf of our country. Um, why? The, that's the great question. And first of all, I'd start off by saying how honored and privileged I have been to serve Delaware in the United States House of Representatives, um, to be able to work on things like strengthening our economy and bringing manufacturing jobs back to America. Uh, to be able to work on things like lowering the cost of prescription drugs for our seniors and ensuring that Delawareans have clean air and clean drinking water. That has been the work that we have done based on what we've heard from Delawareans. And I would love to continue that work in the Senate and also be able to focus on a deeper level on some of those fundamental freedoms and rights on our democracy. Mm -hmm. I mean, you showed me in the chamber and I think about how important, number one, our democracy is and voting rights and also issues of reproductive freedom. And so mm -hmm. for me, our theme is bright hope um, because that's also what I hope right. to bring to the campaign trail and also to the Senate well, and to our country. Yes, and that anticipates the next question I was going to raise, which is your campaign slogan is a bright hope. But that's more than a slogan, isn't it? That's the name of your church. Yeah. So that church was actually my grandmother's church mm. for about 70 years. And so it's it's ironic. I remember just going to to the church with my grandmother. My sister and I were baptized there. And, you know, as I was thinking about the future of our country, it really stuck with me that in this moment, we need not just Lisa's bright hope, but we need every single person to step up and do what they can do in this moment. And that that requires not just hope, but a bright hope, a bright hope that can drown out some of the, the negativity and the darkness that we see. If we're gonna accomplish the great things that we need to, whether it's on climate or our economy or our health, it requires all of us to have bright hope and keep going. Uh, Congresswoman, if elected, you would be the 12th African-American to ever serve in the Senate and only the third black woman to ever serve in the Senate. How important is that to you? Well, you know, I, I can't say that, you know, it's not lost on me that there are currently no black women in the Senate. And, you know, uh, the, the fact that I would be able to represent my state, um, but also bring representation um, from black women is also um, very powerful and something I don't take lightly. I think for most of us, I think if you ask any of the, 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 the women that I know that are running, um, particularly the black women that I know, our goal is to have an impact you know, we, we're not thinking about the necessarily, I can speak for myself, the history of it, even though it's not lost on me. We want to have a great impact on people's lives. And representation does matter. Mm -hmm. So I would be honored to be able to be in that role. As a matter of fact, somebody put in an article that it's possible that you could have the first black woman, Carol Mosley Braun, in the chamber while the second black woman, Kamala Harris, our vice president, deliver the oath of office to a third or fourth black woman. It's, it's incredible to think about. Um, what do you think a black woman would bring to the conversation in the Senate that isn't there right now? 
You know, I think all of us bring our lived experiences. I know for myself, I come from a background um, where, you know, I've been the secretary of labor in Delaware, but I'm also a mom. When I decided to run, I had been widowed. And I think all of us bring these different experiences. As a mom of a black young man, I bring mm. a different experience. And I think also when we talk about reproductive rights, when on the overturning of Roe, most impacted were young people, people in rural areas, women uh, who are, you know, uh, have don't have means, and especially women of color. And so I think we bring uh, a, a lived experience, professional uh, experience, but also a passion for getting things done.